our solar system. Here we can have to know that which types of planets and satellites belong to our solar system and it's also a part of greater galaxy. Then solar system the greater entity is the sun. Sun is the center of our solar system. Here we can see a picture the center division of the sun. What does the center lie? Then here is a, also a picture that is called solar flare. Just you can see here what is the flare like of the sun. It's the gleaming and also it's brightly appearance here. Then also there is a solar wind. What does solar wind look like? We can just see here. Then also there are some spots on the sun that we can see due to the light of sun. But if you observe it through telescope, telescope then you can find out this type of spots of the sun then mercury is also on the planet which is the nearest to the sun and is the second smallest planet in our solar system it's only slightly larger than the earth's moon the surface is covered with craters so you can just see here there are lots of craters on the surface of this mercury and this tiny planet doesn't have any ring for moon and you can just see here there is no any belt any ring and also this mercury doesn't have any moon and it is some evidence of craters then come to the Venus Venus is one of the brightest objects in our sky so it's clearly visible to the naked eye it can be tricky to spot because it's always near the sun so as Venus exists near the sun we can't just visualize or identify any crater on the surface of the Venus it rises and sets with the sun each day. So every day you can see the Venus at the very morning. And we are just calling them at the very morning start. And at the sunset we also can see this. Just we can just say it uh, evening star. Then ancient civilizations believed Venus was actually two different objects. So they called the one that rose the morning star and the one that set the evening star. So Venus, it was the belief, ancient belief, as we can see on the sky in the morning and in the evening. So it got two names. One is the morning star and another was the evening star but this is very amazing that it's on one thing it's a, on a planet that is brightly planet then earth and moon we have been living on the earth and so we have so much information regarding earth and moon is our only own satellite that revolves around the earth so and there are I, only the pimples here two percent to make you de think deeply over the issue. That is, what similarities and differences do you notice between the Earth and the Moon? So we have the urgency to make these types of distances between the Earth. And also the moon. You have to make differences between these two things. And also 
why do they have such different surface features? Well, you can see here. It has one type of surface feature and it is also has different type of surface feature. Different type of surface feature or different type of surface feature. So why do you think that these differences occur? Of course, you can understand it easily. The gravity forces are different here. That's why the elements on the earth and on the sun are just holding together with different forces. That's why they have some changes on their surfaces due to the pressure of gravity. Can you understand it? Okay, you will just also go deep into the net and can try to understand better. So this is also so differences and similarities because of this gravity forces and also the availability of various gases like oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, these types of gases not available everywhere in the uh, same proportion that's why differences occur then Mars it's a very interesting thing that it's a very bright and it makes it very easy to spot in the night sky so Mars is very bright that's why in the night sky you can easily spot where Mars is. So it was named after the Roman god of Earth because its reddish color reminded the people of Mars. So Mars has reddish color, you know, and due to the reddish color, the ancient civilization thought it to be the god of Earth because god of Earth represents the blood. And this reddish color represents the bloody thing. You can just look here. And Olympus Moon is the largest volcano in our solar system. So in the Mars there is also a volcano that is called Olympus Moon. Olympus Moon, the largest volcano in the Mars. And also people have never landed on Mars. So we haven't even landed on the Mars. We have sent robotic explorers there and you know occasionally and um, time and again the scientists NASA is sending their robotic missions to the Mars so that they can understand whether there is any living animate and whether this planet can be just transformed as a place of living. And if you can just look here there are crater that is called Martian crater that on the Mars there are such types of crater and it is also a mission a picture of a robotic mission landed on the Mars then asteroid belt asteroid belt what do you think about this belt this most asteroid not ester it's asteroid that lost their glimmer that lost their brightly featured so most asteroids can be found in the asteroid belt so this asteroid belongs in a, a belt that is called asteroid belt and it's located between Mars and Jupiter the two planets Mars and Jupiter between them this asteroid belongs so asteroids are rocky and metallic objects that orbit the sun this asteroid also orbit the sun but are too small to be considered planet. But these are very small. That's why it can't be considered a planet. They are known as minor planets. Of course, they are also called minor planets. And asteroids range in size from Ceres, which has a diameter of about 1000 km, and down to the size of a pebble. So its size can range from 100 km diameter to the size of pebble. So these are noticeable things for the asteroid belt. An asteroid. Then Jupiter. Jupiter, the fifth planet from the sun, is the largest planet in our solar system also. Jupiter is so big that over 1000 planets, the size of Earth could fit into it. 
and it has over 60 moons and two ranges. So you can find here the moon of the Jupiter. There are a few of Jupiter's moon, the great red spot. There is a red spot. It also a huge storm system of the Jupiter. Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun and is the second largest planet in our solar system. It's often called the ring planet because many rings of dust and rocks surround it. So the great difference of Saturn is that it has various rings, not single rings, it has lots of rings surrounding the Saturn. You can just see here it's a ring form of Saturn's ring and this ring so this ring ring and these are some satellites of the Saturn. So Titan is a moon of Saturn. Titan is the greatest moon of the Saturn. That may have some conditions necessary for life. And the picture on the right shows an artist drawing of how Titan might have looked when the Cassini Fusions probe drove into its atmosphere in December 2004. So, just the scientists are trying to discover if there is any trace of living entity on the Titan of the moon or satellite of the Saturn. And it's also a drawing picture. Yes. What it look like to discover Saturn on the moon also. Then Uranus. Uranus is a very unusual planet because it sits on its side with north and south poles, sticking of the side. It rotates around its axis, so it also rotates around its axis and making it look like a ball rolling around in a circle around the sun. So it rotates on a on circle and it makes like a ball rolling around the sun. So there are some black rings in the Uranus and also Uranus has several moons. That is just you can see here some moons of Uranus. Yes also Neptune. Neptune, usually the eighth planet from the sun, is a very cold place and occasionally Pluto crosses Neptune's orbit and becomes the eighth planet. Its bluish color comes from its atmosphere of methane gas. You can look here, the Neptune looks like very bluish. Very blue. Why? Right? Because there is presence of Neptune methane gas or a Neptune atmosphere and it's the tiny dark moon of the Neptune. Then Pluto, usually the ninth planet from the sun and is the smallest planet in our solar system. Some scientists believe that Pluto once was on the Neptune's moon. But it pulled out uh, from the Neptune and made its own orbit. As Pluto has its own orbit, that's why it's not regarded as the moon of Neptune. And you can see the clearest view in the Pluto and Charon. Charon is the moon of the Pluto, and Pluto is the, you can see here how clear this planet is. And then also comets also our neighboring neighboring brother of the solar system. Comets are sometimes called dark snowballs or icy mud balls. They are a mixture of ice, both water and frozen gases and dust that for some reason didn't get incorporated in the planet when the solar system was formed. That means there are also water and gases that planet form. But why it didn't 
form as a planet due to the just mechanism whenever the solar system was forming they couldn't incorporate together like a ball of a planet that's why it remained a comet this makes them very interesting as samples of the early history of the solar system so here you know comets have elliptical orbits comet orbits elliptically and you know there is a very important comet that is called helis comet helis comet was just first heli it's a 1910 picture when the helis comet was first uh, explored by heli astrologer astronomer then here we will see a picture of a comet when you see a comet we are seeing the tail of the comet as comes close to the sun so we will see the tail of the comet why because the tail comes very close to the sun and due to the fraction of the light of sun on the tail of the comet we can clearly and easily visualize the tails of the comet